Greetings and konnichiwa, patrons of the tavern. This is Rick the Barkeep coming to you on the night before the premiere of Power Rangers. Yes, it is March 22nd, Wednesday evening, and uh, tomorrow I'm going to go see the film. So what this video is right here is this is everything I want to say about the film before I go see it. Uh, you guys have been following my videos. Uh, I have a whole playlist of everything I've said about the movie from the time that I found out the movie was coming out uh, up until now, guys. And this is going to be my opportunity to give my final thoughts on the film before I go see it, to give my final impressions on what I'm hoping, what I'm expecting, er everything like that. Uh, and a few talking points, a, a few things that, that have not been discussed at this point. And then tomorrow after I see the film, I'm going to see it at uh, 7 o'clock. movie will be out 9, 9.30. I forget exactly what the runtime is. And then sometime in the wee hours of the morning leading into Friday, uh, I'll have the, the, the post video up, basically. So you'll have a, a good impression of where I am now as I'm going into the film before I see it the day before, and then where I am after the film ha has come out. So it'll be fun to kind of watch these back and forth on things that I didn't like going into the film and maybe my opinion has changed and maybe there's something I didn't think about that wow that's awesome as it comes out um, so guys enjoy this uh, as the appetizer to the film and I guess uh, the post video would be like the dessert to the film however you want to go ahead and look at it um, and, and I do want to stress this is not the 200th episode uh, of the tavern that's probably going to come some week, uh, sometime the first week of April. I'm still working on that video, um, but this is just going to be kind of a standard vlog, uh, not part of the, the main Onyx Tavern series. But I do want to bring up a few uh, final points that I did not discuss in previous videos because I just didn't have the opportunity to do that, and things that have just now come out uh, that, that I just couldn't squeeze in before. So again, we're going to go ahead and talk about those. Um, just kind of final things that, that I want to say in regards to my feelings on the film. I'm still not sold on the suits at all. I'm not sold on Alpha's design. I'm not sold on the Zord designs. I'm just not sold on, on any of that kind of stuff. However, based on the clips that I've uh, seen thus far of the Rangers, uh, of Zordon, of the action, um, as I said, the actors, I have no idea who these people are. I know Becky G's a singer, but but that's about it. Um, it seems like they can actually you know, act. <laughs> it actually seems uh, like that's something they can go ahead and do. So I'm feeling a little bit better about that. I'm not really enthused about uh, Elizabeth Banks as Rita Repulsa from what I've seen in the trailers. Not to mention reviews that I've read, and I'm going to talk more about the reviews here in a second. Most of the reviews, I, they, they cite two different things as being a major uh, not failing, but problems with the film. One is the CG, big surprise. Uh, again, the things I'm kind of criticizing is, is the CG uh, with the Zords, with the costumes and all that. And the second is the acting of Elizabeth Banks. And again, going to this whole procedure, when I found out she was Rita, I wasn't really sold because what I'd seen her in, it's like, okay, mediocre. And she does seem to be the weak, weak link of the movie based on uh, reviews and, and people that I've trusted that have seen the movie uh, in advance. That's just kind of what I'm hearing. And, and guys, everything I'm going to talk about is going to be spoiler free. Basically, if it's on Facebook, if it's on the Power Rangers Twitter account, uh, you and I have seen it. So there shouldn't be any spoilers in here. Nobody has said anything to me that, that hasn't already been published out there. Uh, but you can take as minor spoilers, whatever you want to go ahead and go with. Um, so again, um, not so on, the, on a lot of the design aspect. It seems like the Rangers are, are going to be good actors. Uh, Brian Cranston looks great. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, that, okay, that's about it um, on, on those points. But I want you to bring us some news points, things that, that have come out uh, basically in the interim since the last video that I've done. So first of all, let's talk about Goldar. As I said, I have no problem with the design of Goldar. Uh, I think it's okay. I think it's great. But one of the things I was concerned about is that Goldar would not actually be a character in his own right, but he would be some sort of force uh, of nature, that he would basically be one of the mindless monsters that we would usually get in the series, um, you, you know, that she'd make from the Monstromatic and, and, and so forth and all that. From what I've been told and what I've read in, in articles, that seems 100% to be the case. Um, as Dean Usler like pointed out in an interview that he done, 
Uh, Goldar is the manifestation, essentially, of Rita's evil. That the reason he looks like he's milked, that he's milked to gold, is that he has no form, no essence of himself. That he takes on, you know, this this uh, symbiote, I, I guess, light shape, this liquid uh, light shape. He puts it more eloquently than, than I am, basically. But again, he, Goldar doesn't have a personality. Based on um, what we know from the trailers and everything, it seems like it's going to be Rita. Goldar with no soul, no personality, whatever, uh, and then the putties, and who knows if they're even going to talk or not. Uh, which concerns me because it seems like Rhea's not going to have anybody else evil to play off of. It's just going to be her. Um, and, and again, there's no Finster, no Squad by Babu from what I've heard. I mean, we've had no indication they're actually going to be in the film at this point. Um, so I just really wonder who's Rita going to be talking to this entire time. And I have a theory that I want to share with you guys, but we'll get into that toward, towards uh, a little bit later here. Um, so, again, my fears about Goldar seem to be substantiated, and, and we'll see where, where that goes. Um, and, of course, again, the big thing about the series is that it's Jason and Goldar. They have that rivalry, kind of morphs into the rivalry with uh, Tommy, and then by the time you get to Alien Zeo, that's kind of gone. So there is going to be no rivalry with Jason's character in terms of the villains. Um, but again, so they're not, it seems Rangers will interact with Rita, but but nobody else, if that makes sense. So that that's a little bit of cause of, for concern in, in my, my point, uh, my view. Um, so we found out why the Zords uh, have multiple appendages, why the Triceratops has six legs and the Mastodon has eight legs. Uh, so I'm not going to put in the same eloquence, but basically here's the thing. The Zords are organic in nature and that they are based on the animals, but don't look 100% like them. And according to Dean Israelite, the way, the way that it was explained basically boils down to it's hard to animate something really big with four legs, so animating it with eight legs makes it a lot easier. I call BS on that, guys. Uh, I'm no animator. I've never worked on that kind of stuff before. But I can tell you right now, if they wanted to animate a robotic elephant with four legs to walk, they can do it. I know they can do it. I, I, I don't really understand this because the article did not answer that question. It just said, basically, it was too hard, so we made it easier for ourselves. But I keep thinking, if you only use the exact model from the series, we wouldn't have this problem. And I'm still wondering why it has eight legs and has a spire web as a weapon. I mean, I'm hoping this thing shoots out liquid nitrogen, tries to freeze enemies. I mean, at least keep that, guys. At least keep that part of it. So, I, again, I don't know what the big deal is in story, basically. Again, they're organic, supposed to be based off animals. But why couldn't you just make a damn hairy elephant robot? I I don't, again, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. I don't think it's going to make much sense in the movie either, and I don't think they're going to bother to explain it. So so we'll see uh, where that takes us. Okay, so, so some of the bigger news that's coming out of the movie, uh, and it's really surprising. So get this, guys. Power Rangers is going to be the first major superhero film to feature not only a gay superhero, but an autistic superhero. Now that may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but I think it means something. Because guys, think about it for a second. We had Marvel and DC films out for decades at, at, at this point. You know, if you want to go back to you know 1990 Captain America and of course 89 Batman and everything, you've had superhero movies forever. And it's only in 2017 that we're getting gay heroes, autistic heroes, and of course a female solo film of a hero. Catwoman doesn't count. Elektra doesn't really count uh, either. But, you know, it's, it's, it's Wonder Woman. That, that's coming out. Uh, so it's amazing we've gotten this far. And the fact that Power Rangers is essentially leading the way uh, for, for gay rights and, I, I wouldn't say autistic rights, but for those that are autistic, that's something. Now, what's even more interesting are the characters they chose for this role. So it's Trini, who's going to go ahead and be uh, the lesbian gay character. And Billy, that's the autistic character. And in a way, they kind of make sense. Now, I spoke to somebody one time and they said, well, knowing Becky G, of course they make her the gay character. Which I have no idea what that means. If you know what it means, 
comment, whatever, let me know. Uh, I guess she's bisexual, whatever. I don't, I don't know what the case is. Um, and, and, and Dargo and a couple of other people kind of text me as soon as they heard about this. It's like, Trini's gay. How do you feel about that? I know she's your favorite character. How, how, how do you feel about that? And the thing is, I'm fine with it. I, I don't hate it. I don't like it. I mean, well, I, I think it's okay. I think it's fine if it's handled well. I mean... It's not. It's a PG thirteen movie, so they're not going to go ahead and handle it like it's a steamy romance scene on Cinemax or Brazzers or anything like that. I don't think that's going to be the case. It sounds like, based on what I've heard, it's going to be rather subtle. Uh, it is what it is, and it's going to be not a major revelation, but it's going to be like, oh, that makes sense, and I'm fine with that. Um, all the power to, to gay rights and everything. And of course, in times we're living uh, now with uh, uh, my president, uh, we could use something like that. We really could uh, to, to help people understand and having a, a major superhero character in a major franchise like Power Rangers. And of course, it's the My Orphan Team. Iconic wise, that's fine as well. And I know a lot of you are going to jump on me and say, well, if they didn't have that in the source material, first off, um, it was... In the series, we only know that Trini went out or tried to go out with one person. That was Richie. And that's, that's about it. Who's to say she wasn't in the series? I really see no indication that says she is or isn't. And if it's retconned in the primary continuity that she was, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. And of course, guys, keep in mind, she's a teenager in the series and in the movie. And if we apply that, she might be confused. I mean, guys, I'm sure the world was not a, a kind place for a Asian American lesbian teenager, even at that time in 1993, 1994. So again, the, the movie's probably going to play off something like that. I'd be totally fine if that was something in the show. And I don't think that sexuality is something that necessarily has to cross over. I mean, if you told me we we're going to make uh, Jason gay or something like that, that's fine too. Yeah, he had a relationship with Emily and all that, but I think sexuality is something that can definitely change. It's not going to be necessary uh, to a specific character. Um, again, it's it's fine with me. I, I don't have, have a big deal with it, but I am glad that it wasn't Billy that they made gay, because as I said a long time ago, David Yost is gay. Billy is not gay. If they made him gay, that's fine, but if they had done that for this film... It's, it's just got an uncomfortable vibe to it. Much in the same way, I think, the way they made Sulu gay in the new Star Trek films, especially at, at the protests of, of George Takei, um, I would feel that David Yost would be opposed to that if that was actually the case. If they had made this new Billy Gay, I think he would, would be opposed uh, to that, rightfully so, since he kind of owns the character. He knows more about the character than, than really anybody else, probably even the writers themselves. Um, it just wouldn't have been a good direction to go. I think it would have been very uncomfortable in that regard, again, given why Billy left the series, why David uh, left the show to begin with. Um, but what they did do is they did make Billy autistic in the film. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know anything about autism. And I know there's like different ranges of the spectrum and all that, and I deal with autistic kids every day at my job. But I don't really know anything about it. But when I heard that Billy was the autistic one, it makes sense. And, and I'll tell you why. But first of all, the trailer, he's lining up the pencils and all that. That seems like some sort of, I guess, neurotic, slightly autistic behavior. You know, OCD, whatever kind of stuff. You know, it's got to be lined up. And, and again, I know that's kind of on the spectrum. But again, I only know a little bit what autism means. But it kind of, kind of makes sense uh, in a way because I was watching some videos long ago. And I forget what the conversation was about, and I almost kind of forget who said it. Um, but it basically went like this, is that some people suppose that if you take a look at what nerd culture was in the 80s and the 90s, how we had the Steve Urkel, uh, you know, the big glasses, antisocial, neurotic, weird kind of nerds and stuff like that. Again, what this guy was saying is that some researchers are kind of believing that what that might have been at that time is undiagnosed forms of autism, other social personality disorders, and so forth. So basically would be as like Urkel was autistic, which is why he acted that way. Now again, Urkel's a fictional character. This might not be true, 
but it kind of does make sense if it was true it, at all. And again, I'm not saying that it is. Um, but to make the smartest on your team autistic in the way that you have kind of like uh, like Rain Man kind of thing does make a little bit of sense. And the way he's portrayed in the trailer, honestly, because of his relationship with Jason in the trailer, how Jason kind of saves him, and the way when they go to the command center for the first time, he you know, is kind of clinging to Jason on what to do. He's asking Jason what to do. It did make me think they might make him gay. When I, when I first heard First Gay Ranger, uh, I, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, is it Billy? Because, again, it made sense based on the way he acted in the trailer. And I thought, okay, David Yost is gay. They're going to go down this path. Which, again, I, I'm not for. Um, nevertheless, when they said that he's autistic, when I was like, okay, it makes sense based on what we've seen and based on, again, nerds and geeks and, and, and stuff like that. I know I'm kind of tiptoeing around here, but that's because I don't have all the facts. But, again, it just kind of makes sense to me based along those lines. That again, it is possible that, again, when people were nerds and geeks and have that antisocial behavior that it could have been some undiagnosed form of autism, social personality disorder, whatever you want to go ahead and call it, whatever it may have been. And to put Billy, the most intelligent of the, the group in this role, that does kind of make sense, I think. Uh, so that all being said, of course, you know, we break it down this way. Uh, Trini's the gay one, Billy's the autistic one, Jason is the guy with the DUI and all that stuff, and Kimberly is the love interest, because apparently Jason's going to be the love interest, and it sounds like there'll be a love triangle between uh, Kimberly, Jason, and Tommy, because he might be in the series. Who knows where that's going to go? Again, that's the only reason Jason and Kimberly would be together, in my mind, is because of the fact that they're going to introduce Tommy, and they're going to have a love triangle, and we really don't know anything about Zach, except Zach seems to be the goof-off based on a couple of videos that we've seen. We really knew nothing from him from the first two trailers, um, but a couple of the extended clips make him the practical jugger, which is fine, because again, that was kind of his personality within the series. And real quick, I do want to bring this up into a brief theory. I could be totally wrong. I could be totally right. Who knows? We'll see when it comes out tomorrow. But here's what I think. The theory at this point has been that Elizabeth Banks' character of, of Rita is actually Trini's mother who's being possessed by Rita's soul, spirit, whatever. And again, I didn't particularly like that in the context of giving a personal enemy to the Rangers, and it's Rita of all people. It sounds like something that's more of an uh, original character they need to go ahead and create, but whatever, that seems to be what's going on. When you look at the trailers in context now, knowing that Trini is gay, if you watch those trailers where Trini's in her bed and Rita's floating on top of her, and the second trailer where it looks like Trini's got her arms uh, around Rita, is it possible, follow me here, is it possible that, and also it says that Trini has supposed boyfriend problems, they find out it's girlfriend problems in the film, that's something I've read about, about it. Um, is it possible that Rita is actually Trini's girlfriend that when we see her in Trini's bedroom in the film she's getting it on kissing whatever and then she turns into Rita and that's where we get into a big fight sequence and the supposed problems that she's having with her girlfriend in the film is she's possessed by Rita and and that's what's happening because it, that would just make sense. It, it really would, guys. Um, the, the pieces kind of make sense. Is it going to be her mother? Is it going to be her lover? I kind of think almost that if it's her lover, it might make it a more interesting film. Um, I mean, she'd still have a personal connection, whether it's her, her mother or her lover and all that. But then there'd probably be subtext in there, a little bit more subtext. Uh, and it would be more interesting in my mind to explore a... Uh, a female lesbian relationship than it is a mother-daughter relationship uh, in that regard. So I'd like to see if I'm right. I'd like to see what direction they take it, but man, that'd be interesting uh, if true. And again, why bring up that information before the film comes out if it doesn't tie into something important? Oh, and by the way, apparently Krispy Kreme is a major plot point in the film. That's something that I've heard as well. We've seen all the promotions and all that, but apparently it's 
it's kind of like the Denny's, I think, in Man of Steel. Which, guys, I have no problem with the advertisement of Krispy Kreme in this film based on what we've seen so far. Because just as a small divergence in Man of Steel, everybody was upset about the advertisements. But go outside once in a while. How many buildings do you see that don't have advertisements on them? How often do you not see billboards? How often do you... Uh, you know, just go into a place called the grocery store. Everybody's advertising everywhere. So when Man of Steel came out, it was a sense of realism because they're in the real world. There, I see advertisements everywhere. And to me, I think it'll be fine as long as they don't say, buy this Krispy Kreme donut pack right now. Go after the movie. As long as that's not in it, I think I'm going to be okay uh, with, with that product plug. And plus, I'm glad it's Krispy Kreme, not Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, so I think the last thing I want to go ahead and bring up is what I've heard from uh, reviewers on this. Now, people that I trust, reviews that I trust, uh, are generally positive. Right now, Rotten Tomatoes, last I checked, it was kind of a 50-50 split, so it's officially rotten. Uh, but here's what I have noticed based on all the reviews that, that have been coming out. I've read a couple of them, i watched a couple of videos and all that. There is a stigma on this film already because it's Power Rangers. And we've talked about this at length a number of times. People see Power Rangers, they automatically want to write it off. IGN, the first thing they said in their video review made me stop it before I watched the rest of it, is they call it cheesy and campy. That's exactly what they called it. And I don't know about you guys, but this doesn't look like 97 Batman and Robin. This doesn't look like 1966 Adam West. Batman. And we'll, we'll talk about cheesy and cabin this another time. Trust me, we're going to go over that. But it seems to me that reviewers already went into this movie not expecting much because it's Power Rangers. They look at a cast of no-name actors. They get Brian Cranston, who only filmed three days of shooting, and he's kind of the face in the movie right now, second to probably Elizabeth Banks, because she's doing all this, this promotional tie-ins and stuff. Um... And they just, they just want to write it off because it's Power Rangers. That's it in their mind. As soon as they hear, if they heard new superhero movie about five teenagers and all that, oh, this is interesting. This is going to be what's going to challenge Marvel and DC now. And then they hear, oh, it's a Power Ranger movie. They're like, it's going to suck. Well, I got to bother. I'm going to lower my expectations. It's a Power Ranger movie. And, and here's the thing, guys. My Morphin Power Rangers movie, it was a decent movie. Turbo, not so good. So... Not exactly bad in a thousand with Power Ranger movies, and a lot of people out there have no idea the show is still on the air. But I think the film is going to suffer in the critic reviews because they're going in with this mindset. They Again, it's a Power Ranger movie. That's all they see, and they're going to have that throughout the film. They're, I don't think they're given a fair chance. I really don't. Now, to be fair, on the other side, you know, anytime I go see a trailer for a movie, like, that movie looks good, and then it says, directed by Michael Bay, I'm out. I'm out because there is a stigma of Michael Bay and I'm just not going to go ahead and see uh, the film. I'm not going to bother with it. Much in the same way I see a film that has uh, the word Fast and Furious in the title. No, I'm out of it. I'm not going to go ahead and watch that. Much how, And some people, they see a comic fan Sandler. Nope, done. Not doing it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's un I guess it's unfair for me to criticize in that regard, but I just think... 24 years on television, guys, world-renowned, based off of a television series in Japan that's got 40 years on its own. Give it a little damn credit. I mean, how many of you actually went into uh, Jessica Jones thinking it, this was going to go ahead and be good? You probably didn't, because you didn't know who Jessica Jones was, you didn't respect Jessica Jones and all that, but then you probably liked it. Or heck, how many people went into Guardians of the Galaxy or any of these franchises? Heck, for the longest time, Iron Man was a joke. But then people went to see his movie and it's like, oh, I love Iron Man. He's my favorite superhero now. Because after how many people liked Iron Man before 2008? I mean, I mean seriously, guys. So, I, I think if people can shake off the stigma that it's Power Rangers and raise their expectations a little bit, know that this is almost a $200 million budget film, that this is basically a summer blockbuster at the beginning of spring, that they're trying to 
uh, reboot it, trying to bring back the old audience, trying to bring in a new audience, and gain respect. And I think that's the key here, guys, is that Power Rangers needs respect. That's what this film is trying to go ahead and get. It's already got my respect with a number of things that it's done. And even if it's a bad movie, even if it's a bad movie, I'm still going to respect it for... The, the, the things that it has tried to go ahead and do. It tried a gay character, an autistic character. It tried something new. It's actually getting into the personalities uh, of the Rangers. Um, I may hate the, the Jack Officer uh, Alpha character design, but they got an SNL comedian to voice him. You know, they're trying a lot of things here. So again, for every bad thing I've said about the film, I'm giving it a chance. I want it to be good. That's what I want, guys. I, I want to come into the film and be good. I want other people to respect it, too. Even if it does turn out to be a bad film, respect it for, for it being Power Rangers. Because, again, why is, why is it that you go and say, oh, it's a Marvel movie, going to love it. Oh, it's a DC movie, going to love it. Power Rangers, mm, don't want to see it. Because people that are not Power Ranger fans, they're friends of mine, they don't want to see it. Because it's Power Rangers. They're like, it's for kids, it's crap, whatever. I'm not going to go ahead and see it. But they don't look at it as a viable franchise. They don't look, see again, Batman, Superman, Iron Man, Captain America, Power Rangers. They they don't look at Power Rangers as the equal of these other superhero teams. And, and just as a quick aside, guys, I've been reading the Justice League Power Rangers. Let me bring up something for you. In the third issue, um, basically the Rangers and the Justice League need to work together to solve a problem. And basically here's what it is. Like, uh, all right, well, who do we have on team? We have Superman, who has super intelligence uh, and all that. We have... a uh, Wonder Woman, who has the knowledge of Athena. We have Cyborg, who's basically living in a computer. We have The Flash, who is a scientist. And we have Batman, who is Batman. And who the Power Rangers have? Billy, the most intelligent human in his world, who they then condescend, looks like he's 12. See, see guys, the Power Rangers, the Justice League, the Avengers, they're all on the same level because they're all superhero teams. They're trying to save the world and I'll think deserve respect. But that comic, as good as it is, and as much as they're trying, they disrespect the Power Rangers in, that, in those two panels. They basically said, everybody in the Justice League is super smart. The Power Rangers have one smart person. And that's it. That's all they have. And that bothers me. That, that really, really kind of bugs me. Now, the rest of the comic is good, but there it is. There's the condescension. There is comparing power, the Power Rangers and making them feel inferior to all other superheroes out there. And that's what bothers me. That's that's Death Battle is going to do an episode, another episode of Power Rangers. They already made him lose to a Gundam for crying out loud, which doesn't make any sense. Again, if you follow the logic of Power Rangers and I, my explanation, but I guarantee you, this next Death Battle is going to have Power Rangers in it, and whoever is Power Ranger, whoever they choose for the Power Rangers is going to lose to whoever the other person or thing is. That's that's what's going to happen because people at Screw Attack don't have respect for them. Uh, people at Watch Mojo. Go watch a Watch Mojo video of a top 10 Power Rangers anything. They always got to condescend in some way. They have a negative tone when they talk about it, like they don't respect it. They say, oh, this is all a joke. I saw a video about the top seven things you probably don't know about Power Rangers. And the guy basically said at the end, I can't comprehend what I just said. Okay. And then again, when Watch Mojo does another top 10 video, like top 10 superhero themes, Power Rangers isn't even mentioned. Greatest superheroes in the world, Power Rangers, not even mentioned. They basically, they don't look at Power Rangers as being equal. Sure, they make the videos and all that, but they say, oh, Power Rangers, <laughs> let's make fun of them. And then, of course, Superman. Oh, reverence, it's Superman. Oh, the Hulk, greatest hero ever. That, that's the way they look at it. That's the way the world looks at Power Rangers. And I think that's incredibly unfair. Because, again, guys, Batman was campy and weird and strange and was for kids at some point. And all those things that they say about Batman... They're, they're in 1966, they're saying about Power Rangers, then and now. They don't think anything has changed, and tons have changed since they had the dumpster, guys. Again, I personally don't think it's campy, I don't think it's cheesy or anything like that, and I don't think it's directly for kids. Not anymore. Not the way the series has progressed, um, with the exception of Super Mega Force. In any case, um, that's what it is. It's respect, and I'm sick and tired of it. Wrap this up. I can't wait to see the movie. Um, I want it to be good. I'm sure it's going to be good. And I'm going in my Red Ranger helmet. So you guys can uh, 
Uh, I'll take some pictures. I'll post them up on, on the Tavern's uh, Facebook page and all that. You guys can go ahead and take a look at it. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to go ahead and see it. I'm stoked. And I hope you guys go see it. Please go see it. Enjoy it. And Friday morning, early in the hours, look for the video to follow up. Um, I, I, I hope I definitely enjoyed it. I, I hope everything I want in this movie comes true. And I hope there's a few surprises uh, in the film. And oh, there's a mid credit scene. So make sure you guys stay. Uh, I'm told that that is amazing. It's excellent. I don't know what it is, but definitely go ahead and stay for it. So that's all I got. So patrons, thank you for listening. Have a good evening. And the Tavern Vlog is now closed.